Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we're going to talk about how to lock a parent form and the sub form based on some condition in Microsoft Access. For example, once an order is marked paid, we're going to lock the order and lock all the detail section in the sub form there so you can't change that stuff too. All right, talk about that in today's video. Today's question comes from Gary in Warwick, Rhode Island, one of my Platinum members. Gary says, I followed the techniques that you showed in your disallow editing data video to lock orders once they are marked paid. However, this doesn't prevent the user from modifying the records in the order detail subform. How can I lock the whole thing down? Well, Gary, you're right. The disallow editing data video only dealt with a single form. Right, we covered allowing edits, deletions, and, and additions, but we only dealt with a single form and only just that record, and we didn't have any subforms on it. So it's a little more complicated, but let me show you how to do that in today's video. First up, of course, if you haven't watched this video first, go watch this first so you understand how all this stuff works. This is also a developer level video. What does that mean? Well, that means we're gonna need a little bit of VBA, not much, just a little bit. So go watch this video if you've never done any VBA before. Make sure you understand how to use an if then statement. We're also going to use the after update event as well as the on current event. And if you haven't watched my invoicing video yet, go watch this first because this will teach you how I built the order entry system and the invoicing and all that stuff. These are all free videos. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch them all and then come on back. Okay, here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can grab a copy off my website if you want to. And in here we've got customers and customers can have orders. And now what we want to do here is whenever an order is marked paid, we want to lock this all down. Now in the other video, I showed you how to lock the fields on this particular order, right? But we didn't talk about subforms. So let's go first of all and set it up so that we can lock the parent form, okay? To do this, I'm going to start off by putting something in the after update event. Okay, so let's go to the is paid field, bring up its events, go to after update. That'll bring up my VB editor. Here we are. Okay, now I'm going to put in here, I'm going to say if is paid, then we're going to do some stuff, right? Me.allow edits equals false. Me.allow deletions equals false. We talked about this in that other video. You can also turn off allow adds, ad additions, but I don't think that's necessary here. If you want to add a new order, go right ahead. I just want to prevent a user from modifying a paid one. All right. Otherwise, if this guy is not paid, then we're going to flip that. Remember, we have to do this for each one because if you go to an unpaid order, then we still want to be able to modify it. Okay. And that should lock down the order when the is paid is changed. That happens in the after update. All right, but I also need this to happen when I open the form and when I move from record to record. That's the on current event, All right? So I'm gonna put the same stuff in the on current event, but I don't wanna duplicate my code. I don't wanna have the same code in two places, right? So we're gonna take all of this, cut it out, and we're gonna make a new subroutine, private sub, we're gonna call it lock order, and I'm gonna put that stuff in here in lock order, right? So now from the after update event, I just got to call lock order. And now I can put the same stuff in the forms current event. So I don't have to have the same code duplicated in two locations. Always try to avoid that. If it's the same stuff, make your own subroutine. All right, so now I can come back here. I can go to the forms properties, go to events, find on current, dot, dot, dot. And right in here, lock order, lock or unlock order, depending on the situation, right? Okay, save that, always throw in a debug compile. Let's come back out here. I'm gonna close the order down. Let's open her back up again. Now, this is a paid order, so I should not be able to modify stuff here, right? Can't modify, can't modify. Let's see if I can delete, can't delete. Everything's good, but I can still come down here and change the items on the order, which is not a good thing, right? I can still come down here and do that. And Well, now it looks like he paid a big, big, much bigger order than he, he actually paid for it. Okay, and I should also add in at this point, there's nothing to stop the user from going to the table. If you have the table open and they can just change is paid there. 
you know you can set up any kind of other security that you want in the database to keep that you know from happening i usually set up a manager password i got some whole separate videos on how to do all of that stuff today we're just worried about if this order is paid i want to lock down the subform all right so how do we lock down this subform well if you look at the form right this guy here is it's a separate form but it's also a control on the order form what's the name of that control right order detail f is the name of the control now on the data tab you'll see there's enabled and locked we can set the locked property to yes in our vb code if we want to lock this thing down so let's go back to our code and right in here we're going to say order detail f that's the name of the subform dot locked that's the controls property equals true we got to flip it here right we're going to lock it and that's true okay and again come down here below it and make this false unlock it if the order is not paid all right come back up here let's close this close it back down open it back up again all right that's still locked and now this is also locked i'm clicking in here i'm trying to type i can't change things all right if i go to a different order if this one is not paid i should be able to come in here then make changes and make changes and make changes okay all right come back over here and i can't make additions either but unfortunately i can still delete records i don't like that in fact we need to add that to the list of stuff for the suggestions for the access team right sammy add that to the list if the if the subform control is locked i should not be able to delete records either all right that's just i don't like that but we can still control that with one more line of code now this is a little more tricky this involves modifying a property on the subform itself all right the allow deletions property of the subform okay so let's go back into here okay so now it's going to be order detail f dot you expect to find it here but it's not here you got to go dot form dot allow deletions all right that's going to be equal to false what does that mean so it's the order detail f is the control dot form says i need to access the form properties all right it's the properties of that form itself not the properties of the order detail f control right because remember you got a control and then inside the control you have the form i know it's weird it's weird if you're new to access new to developing this will take you a little while to get right but all of those properties okay save that all of the properties of the form right this parent form up here has got a whole bunch of properties right allow deletions allow edits allow all this stuff a record source okay all of these same form properties are available to this subform in here and notice that distinction right if i if i'm up here if i click on this thing once I just selected the control, right? The subform control. If I click on it again, now I've got the form properties inside. Okay, so it's an, an important distinction to keep in your head. You got two things you're working with here. Well, three things really. You got the parent form, you got the subform control, which we can lock, but that doesn't that doesn't change the ability to delete it inside here, which we should. And then we also have the control or the the properties of the form itself inside the control Ugh, i know i know i know you get used to it after a while okay so now that i've done that this guy's paid so i should not be able to change this i'm trying to change this nothing's happening i can't make changes here i can't make changes here i can't delete stuff I'm trying to press delete can't delete it okay that's good let's go to the next record all right changing things here changing things here deleting stuff here and everything works fine and there you go that's how you can lock down the parent form and the sub form okay and and now how you get to the point where you can undo this where you can unlock that that's up to you i got another video that i put together where i have a thing called an edit mode which um you can you can use for that and you know you can switch between being allowed to edit and not edit something same same concept here with once something's paid or not right um, this is because some some people have users that they get confused that you can just come in here and just change whatever you want whenever you want they want to have to manually make them click an edit button to switch to either an edit or a viewing mode all right so that's one way you could do it
Or of course, I got this video where I show you how to prevent deletions. And in the extended cut, I show you how to set up a manager password. So if you do try to make a change, like in, in this other video, for example, if you try to um, uh, delete the record, but you could easily have it. So if someone tries to mark an order unpaid, it just asks them for a manager password. Or of course, you can go through the techniques I show in my security seminar, which I show you how to hold, lock the whole database down so that users can't do certain things or they can do certain things. And you can just set it up so that a manager type account can, can go in and mark stuff unpaid or can even change things that are marked paid. It's all completely up to you. They're your Legos. You build them however you want to build them. And I also, one more thing, I also do show another technique for locking and unlocking if an invoice is paid in my Access Developer Level 9 course, where I actually give you a button that says this order is paid, click here to edit. Then that you can ask for a manager password or any other kind of security that you want to as well. So there's all kinds of things you can do. But Gary, there you go. That's how you lock down the order and the sub form. And that's going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the video's up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming as long as you keep watching them I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing. Free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay. Want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my access forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. 
Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.